<laughs> so welcome to our review of a little film called Miyamoto Musashi, which came out in 2009. <laughs> so this was a surprise. Um, I checked this out. There we go. Um, <laughs> because I was interested in Miyamoto Musashi. Uh, who is this guy? This guy is a legendary samurai who lived through the transition uh, into the Tokugawa shogunate. That's the famous shogunate that is, if you think of the samurai era, you know, you think of um, samurai and peasants and rice farming and all those classic things. That's the Tokugawa era. And from about 1600 to about the 18, eight, mid-1800s. And... He basically lived through that 1600-era transition. Um, very, very, very successful samurai. He faced dozens and dozens of men in Mortal Kombat and won. Wow. Um, and he wrote a book called The Book of the Five Rings, Ooh. which is a book about um, Bushido, the samurai code, uh, which is a thing that's evolved over time. And The Book of the Five Rings is, is considered one of the kind of classic texts on that concept, and on what, what Bushido might be. Um, and this is, this is the interesting thing. It, it's by Production IG, which is a well-respected um, anime studio, directed by um, this guy who's done a lot of interesting things. He directed Video Girl I, he directed California Crisis, um, Otogi Zoshi, Combustible Campus Gardris, which is awesome if you get a chance to see it. Uh, he worked on the Ghost in the Shell movie, Pat Labor 2, Rose of uh, Versailles, oh, Charles wow. Joe. Yeah, oh my of, goodness, all cool sorts stuff. of great stuff. Um, this is a mixed media documentary. Mixed media? It's not... It's a documentary. It's a, it's a documentary. Um, there's live action footage, there's CGI, there's traditional anime animation. Oh, wow. Um, and it is basically trying to correct a lot of the misinformation or a lot of the, the assumptions about Musashi and his life that have evolved over time. Um, it's kind of a weird thing. It's kind of like us coming out with a, a documentary about George Washington. You know, we're not going to spend a lot of time telling you all the events he in didn't Washington's cut life. down that cherry tree like you think. Exactly. Um, so, it is trying to provide kind of this scholarly context where here's what people think, but here's what people have actually research this, have to say, but in a very, like, kid-friendly way. So, like, yeah. it's all subtitled in Japanese. Mm. So you can follow it if you're a kid. So it's, it's very easy that way. Um, about the first half covers Musashi's samurai code, his view on how to live and behave, and how that related to what he went through as a person. Mm. And how his biography um, informed his beliefs. Mm. So, for example... He was a foot soldier, and he was always fighting around um, samurai on horses. If you were on a horse, you were of higher rank. His style was the, the two-handed fighting style. Um, two-handed. Yeah. Now, when you think of a samurai who is um, about to attack you, what is his stance? Well, I, I would think he, he has his sword with both hands. Exactly. And Musashi says that's dumb. Oh. And can you think of why that might be dumb? Well, it ties up one of your hands. It gives you a strong, powerful sure does. One, but now here's the thing. Imagine I'm here with my sword in, my, in this hand, right? Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm just holding with one hand. Uh -huh. And you're going to strike me. Oh, that leaves me open here. Right. Now, now you have all that power, right, which you can use to deflect. Right. But, but how do you actually get that power? If you're just standing like this and trying to do that, you can't get much power. No. So what you would do is you would swing back, right? I would. At which point I kill you. Ah. Right? Oh. Oh. Yeah. There's a flaw in the two-handed mm -hmm. approach. And one of Musashi's ideas was basically that <laughs> this you know, the two-handed approach was the way. That was just how you were taught Everybody to hold does the sword. It. That, that's why you do it. And he said it's not logical. It's not rational. He reinvented their wheel. He completely reinvented the wheel. Wow. Um, and but also more importantly, when you're on a horse, you can't do this. No, you got to hold the reins. You got to exactly. You know, yeah, you're out of control. Totally. So his style was very much inspired by him imagining being on a horse. Uh. 
and that's how we practice being on two, being two hands and then by when he fought people with that style he realized oh this is effective oh wow it's a bit of all that way. so that's kind of the idea behind it is that there's a lot of this um you know understanding musashi's life and how that evolved his views um and then the last half is about these sort of misconceptions about these popular views of musashi and the historical record and People see him as this kind of Zen master. And he's actually a very practical person. Um, so, for example, at one point, he fought somebody you know, who had a sword with a boken, like this. Uh, a wooden sword. Yeah, against a, against a, a samurai sword. With a, a battle against right, wood. Right, <laughs> And he fought. And he fought that way. He survived? After hammering a bunch of nails in the end. <laughs> uh-huh. That's smart. Exactly. Um... <laughs> And, and that was the idea, is that you know, he, he was like, you could even use a, a wooden sword against an opponent. He's like, yeah, but the point is, you find a way to make it effective. You don't just, you know, use your Zen power that with a wooden sword. That could overcome right? all sorts of requirements of, you're not allowed to have a weapon. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, right. I've got a stick with yeah, a nail. Yeah, right, it's not totally. okay, I'm using it for plowing this field, and mm-hmm. now I've got a... St- <laughs> and, and that was one of his, his, his views, is that... Um, he very much promoted this idea of, of being very practical, of saying, figure out your opponent, figure out what, 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 you, have, what you have to do, um, and use whatever you have, you know? Um, Whatever's at hand. So, for example, he was facing um, a, a very stubborn man um, in the deep winter. And the man said, I will wait for you in this one spot until you come and we will fight. And so Musashi went there ahead of time, scattered it out, and waited two days. Um, and so the guy came, you know, had his little fire, sat with his retainers and waited. You know, a day later he waited, and Musashi showed up, um, managed to get the guy alone, fought him, and killed him because the guy was cold. <laughs> he basically said, you know, what I'm going to do, I know he's going to stand out there in the snow waiting for me. He just waited until mm-hmm. he was I'm, you know, to finish. Uh, right, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a man, I'm a samurai, I'll, I'll tough, tough it out. Guy. I right. Can, I can take you, I'm a tough guy. <laughs> so he shows up all nice and warm and limber, and okay, let's do this. He used the guy's hubris against mm-hmm. himself. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow, that's um, pretty practical. It's very practical. Um, so, back to the film. It's a real mixed bag, because... Uh, a lot of the film is basically this all CGI like classroom mm-hmm. with a professor um, who's this sort of super deformed old guy who's, sitting, who's going around you know, uh, lecturing, and then this uh, girl assistant in a kimono who's going around in the background kind of showing off things, um, kind of demonstrating stuff about, about horses and so forth. And a good chunk of the film is just that, of just him sort of explaining things to you. Uh, then there's some live action footage of these various locations that Musashi was in. So we know where the battle of Sahara was, and we can have footage of that you know, field. Um, but the main thing for us is these production IG produced anime footage uh, uh, sequences, which show these moments in Musashi's life. So you see that duel he was in, um, and these are very stylish. Um, there's obviously not a massive animation budget. In other words, it's not you know 30 frames per second of animation, but they put a lot of time and effort into making those footages um, feel remarkable and, and feel different and, and, and do. They're also very desaturated uh, because the CGI is kind of cartoony and live action is live action. They specifically went with this very desaturated kind of grayish palette for that uh, with things like, you know, red kind of popping out for blood and things like that, which wow. makes it feel yeah. different, makes it feel, you know, uh, uh, big and remarkable, especially for somebody living in this very brutal time. You know, it is this kind of black and white. This, uh, this sort very, of thing. very, very historical feel. Having having the mm-hmm. color removed, it doesn't. It doesn't. And, and I think it's also partly because a lot of the classic Musashi films are black and white films, so it's kind of a callback to that. You know, it feels a little bit like a black, black and white film. Um, so direction, cinematography, um, the live action shots are simple and clean. I mean, it's just it's like a documentary. You know, demonstrating. You know, yeah, yeah, and. You know, when they're showing a shot of a field, it's a shot of a field, right? There's nothing too yeah. remarkable Here, Here's there. the field. Yeah. Um, the CGI the tends field. to hold on the, the CGI a little bit too long. It's a little, I don't know, um, 
I think like a kid's show, where if, you, if you're showing somebody explaining something, you kind of hold on that for a long time. So you can absorb, kind of absorb it. it. Yeah. So it's not particularly dynamic, but it, it works fine, what it's doing. Um, the anime, much more arty, much more dramatically edited. Um, you know, two characters are facing off, and they'll hold on that. Then there's the break and sudden action and movement and lots of camera angles jumping back and forth between that. So that's very well done. And I would say, if you like, you know, the animation... The movie is worth watching. You might be one of those people who starts watching the movie and just fast forwards to the animation. To the animation, <laughs> um, and that's totally fine. And, and, and they are worth watching for that. Um, but having an interest in the history of him, yeah, definitely helps. And I did not know much about Musashi. I knew he was looking by five rings. Um, I'd read that at one point in the past. That's about all I knew. Um, and I found it very interesting all the material they, they provided. So you don't need to be a Musashi, you know, otaku. Like <laughs> Um, the, the narrator himself, um, he can get into kind of lecturing old man mode, which is a little annoying <laughs> after a while. They kind of push that a little, a little bit too much where I, I wish there was some, there were more visuals. I wish there was a bit more than just, you know, CGI character talking to you for, for, for a while. Um, not too bad, but just sometimes in a drag. Um, there are a few funny moments where he gets really worked up over a topic. Um, and really frustrating because Musashi wasn't like that. People really think that. It's just, no, no, that's, that's not really the truth. Um, but, but the voice does get a little grating over a while. They, they are doing that kind of, you know, old man explaining things to you voice. It's uh, just, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is, 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 is this in English or is this uh, Japanese? No, all, all Japanese. Um, and I, I watched a fan sub. I don't know if it's available any other um, way. It came out eight years ago now. So, I don't know. Someday. Um, someday. Um, and other than that, there's not much else voice acting. Uh, the I don't think the, the female assistant talks at all. Um, the there's a little bit of the, the historical characters talking back and forth, um, but those are brief. It's mostly you know, action sequences. So and those are fine, but just you know not much to talk about there. Um, so because it's basically a set of corrections to modern assumptions about Musashi, um, it can feel unsatisfying because it's. It's not plotting out Musashi's life, mm. right? It's not plotting out Musashi's philosophy. So assuming that some of us already have those assumptions about him, mm -hmm. but we, but we, we might we not don't. even know. <laughs> and I think they, yeah. they provide enough context for you to understand what they're talking about. Mm. Um, but, you know, there's not a through line mm. um, in the sense of going through, you know, when he was born, been, when he died, yeah. or whatever. Or, you know, here's the, the beginning of the Book of the Five Rings through to the end. It's... Mm. It's a variety of things that kind of moves, like a lecture. It's very much like a lecture about a topic. Um, so I, I found it fascinating, um, and I think it's definitely something that you can um, you can appreciate without knowing that stuff. Uh, just be aware of that going in. That it, it's not for everybody, and I think it's. Uh, but I think it's 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 interesting. You know, it's one of those things where you will learn something. From this. And this was a studio IG for the whole production IG. Um, yeah, now, or just you know, the anime. As with everything, I know they did the anime. I'm sure other people were involved, you know, it's with, you know oh, that makes you, sense. You, yeah, you, they, they... subcontract out or whatever. Um, but I, I believe this was a production IEG, you know, directed project, mm. and they found other people to, people to do the various out pieces to of different. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, and the director is a production IEG person, all that kind of good stuff. So, for so. as a hif history buff, it, yeah, it would be definitely worth definitely that. interesting and. Uh, to that point, one of the nice things is it does give you that context mm. of things like the Battle of Sekigahara, which is one of the things that started the that um, helped form the shogunate, the Tokugawa shogunate. Um, it gives you elements about samurai, about bushido, and about things like that. So, for example, one of the reasons uh, we'll leave on this one: um, Musashi was not really a household word among Japanese people mm. until the 20th century. Mm. He was just some samurai who wrote this book one day. Until the first Russo-Japanese War, the Japanese government, the, the military particularly, had really turned their back on the use of swords in war, hmm. understandably. Um, Bring and, a sword to a gunfight. Exactly. Um, and then there was this major battle where the Japanese were defending this fort uh, against a bunch of Russians. The Russians all fixed bayonets and charged. Uh, the sword! Yeah. Uh, um, a the, short sword! <laughs> very short. <laughs> and the officers pretty much held their, their, their uh, ground, but the enlisted men just ran. Like, they, they were freaked out by this. They just yeah. couldn't handle that. When I mean, you imagine a bunch of Russian, you know... Yeah, with a knife so on the end of their gun. Both a knife and a gun. Yeah, yeah. done. Yeah. Um, so this was a major problem for the Japanese military, because oh. there was no... 
they didn't have anything within their their military or really their propaganda mm-hmm. around this vital aspect yeah, of close things. quarter combat. So basically, they, they they went back and said, okay, was there some Japanese hero, hero well known for using blades, who also had a philosophy of battle? Oh, ideally focused around blades. Huh. Ah. To give you an idea, at the time, the only major book about Bushido was in English. Oh, what? Yeah. Because it just wasn't a thing they talked about. It wasn't. It wasn't a a. They were modernizing. They were part of the, the modern future. That was the past. We don't care oh, about yeah, that anymore. Yeah, that's for the old people. Okay, exactly. exactly. Um, <laughs> so you know, Bushido was referenced in other things. It, it was, you know, but, but the but, the major book was written by a Japanese person, like living in San Francisco. Um, wow. So <laughs> they translated that real quick, yeah. uh, brought that over, and then started pop, you know, uh, popularizing um, Musashi. And that's one of the reasons for this film is it's saying that you know then uh, that became this idea that Musashi was this you know. Oh. Brilliant, but you, you know, triangulate a little bit mm-hmm. of the mm-hmm. sources and history, so it's not just the one source history book. It's yeah. The, mm-hmm. Okay, here's some references, and yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah, Musashi was definitely used as a political tool after his death, you know? yeah. as so many people are. So <laughs> this helps provide more of that information. So anyway, cool. Let me find that useful. Uh, Learned about Musashi. Exactly. Okay, so what what year was that? Uh, uh, Two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. The movie came out. So and that's the problem is there's a lot. You know, you search for me on. You know, it was actually movie. Oh, there's yeah, lots, lots, of, lots of them. This is the 2009 one. Um, in fact, they, they start by by showing um, you know all the books about Musashi and all the DVDs about Musashi and all this kind of stuff, and then saying, and they're all wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, because a lot of them are based on this weird historical thing. Um, so yeah, so look at the 2009 version of the movie, and and you'll find it. Uh, and yeah, I found it fascinating. Cool. I've got to see this. Yeah. <laughs>